Senator Ludlow. Thank you very much, Madam Acting Deputy President. This um, don't normally speak to these MPIs because they can, as some senators have observed, be fairly, fairly predictable. Um, couldn't let this one go past. It's premised on this rather now famous quotation. I thank our colleagues in the Labor Party for bringing it forward. The PM's election promise right on the eve of the last federal election, and it couldn't have been clearer, that there would be no cuts to education, no cuts to health, no change to pensions, no change to the GST and no cuts to the ABC or SBS. And it's, I think, a measure of the despair with which many people hold politicians that you would get a comment as bald-faced as black and white as that that is then immediately doubled back on at the earliest opportunity. And that is the nature of someone who lied his way into office. There's no way of being more polite about it than that. It's as though the Prime Minister exists in his own eternal political present, um, where words just come out of his mouth to suit a particular moment or a particular sound grab, and then tomorrow it's as though it was never said, and we're all meant to just forget that it ever happened. The GST, I guess, was the last piece of that puzzle up until fairly recently, and of course that's now been put into the public domain as well. And so that catalogue of deliberate deceptions um, is now complete that the GST has have been set running. Um, so everything, as far as this government's budget repair proposals uh, are concerned, everything is on the table except that which might offend powerful donors or interests. That's been very safely quarantined away as you've been marching around the landscape abolishing taxes for the last 12 months. And those economic interests, many of them very uh, used to exercising their political clout, some of them are coming in quite a hard line and strategic way after our national broadcasters, the ABC and the SBS. And it's those, that element of this trashed promise uh, to the Australian public right before the election that I want to focus on. Cuts of somewhere between $120 million and $200 million to our national broadcaster, the ABC, being described by the minister as a down payment. It's, it's really quite creepy behaviour when you think about it. Nice national broadcaster you've got there. It would be a shame if anything were to happen to it. Threats to editorial independence, threats to funding, and now direct threats to programming. Maybe the ABC would be forced to take advertising. Uh, maybe it would be forced to curtail its online presence. And you can kind of see why some of the ideologues who are coming after the ABC and SBS are so terrified of how well our national broadcasters are performing online. They're doing some of the most innovative stuff, I would say not just in the country, but in the world, for taking a, a publicly funded national broadcaster and putting that presence online in a way that actually uh, enlarges its audience to a new generation of people who aren't necessarily watching uh, uh, mainstream free-to-air TV or, for that matter, reading newspapers. And what I have come to realise is that the ABC and the SBS aren't being attacked because they're failing. They're being attacked because they're succeeding a little too well. Uh, and that, I think, is something that's really worth uh, considering. These broadcasters are loved. They are national institutions that are loved by people right across the political spectrum and right across this continent, uh, from downtown in the big cities all the way out to the most uh, remote and regional areas where you can get an ABC radio broadcast. And that is why it's one of the elements, I think, of why this government is in such trouble. Um, asked about the prospect as to whether this could lead to job losses, at this stage we're looking at five or six hundred job cuts. It may be less than that, it may be more. We don't know the scale of the cuts that are proposed. Mr Turnbull has said, oh well it would depend which staff are cut. The ABC is not a workers' collective. What contempt! as though anybody proposed that it was a workers' collective. It's a much-loved national broadcaster. Um, and that is why I think we've already seen the beginning of the damage being done. 80 staff have been let go from ABC uh, International. So the uh, Australian network has been trashed. The payments from DFAT to wind up its operations fell short by $5 million. And the broadcaster is facing serious and significant cuts. And that's why we will fight it. So putting the government on notice now, don't be surprised if the tiny handful of ideologues who loathe the very existence of public broadcasters who won't necessarily come to heel when they demand it, don't be too surprised if that tiny handful of people are completely overmatched by the breadth and the depth and the passion within, uh, with which Australian people from right across the country, right across the political spectrum, will stand up and fight for their national broadcasters, both the ABC and SBS. You are put on notice now. The Prime Minister may have forgotten that commitment that he made to the rest of the country right before the election, but we have not.